Hi there, welcome to Live with the Paper Pixie, episode 224. I'm Julie DiMatteo, the Paper Pixie, and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator here in the US. I'm coming to you live from Alpharetta, Georgia in the Atlanta area. As you're rolling on in, say hello and where you're watching from, and hello to those of you watching on replay. I'm gonna pop into the comments and say hello. I love reading the chatter before I go live for those of you that are watching via YouTube, but hi Johnny, Gail, Judy, hi Jackie, Don, Cheryl, Amy, hi Brad and Jackie from Sydney, Stephanie, Michaela, hello, hi Lori, you guys are awesome. Oh yay, you're getting your product shares. Thank you for all of your emails with your kind comments about the shares. They um, They arrived fairly quickly. I know some of you are still waiting for them, but they are on their way. So thank you so much. Yes, my husband Brian is with me. He is watching for your questions um, and he will pop those up on the screen if they're relevant to the project and otherwise I'll save questions that are not related to tonight's projects till the end of the stream. We'll make sure to try to go through those questions at the end. Um, you guys are awesome. Thank you, Tracy. Um, hi, Kathy, Linda, Rosina. Hey, hey, Norlene. Hi, Jean, Amelia. Welcome. All right, so tonight I've got a couple of things, a couple of housekeeping things, and then we'll jump right into the projects. I do have some show and tell from the kids. Lily is selling Girl Scout cookies, so if you don't have a local Girl Scout cookie, I'll tell you how you can get cookies from Lily. And I think, oh, Tilly, you're at Costco watching me. That's hilarious. Thank you. Tonight's projects are fun. They're bright using the um, the beautiful, the rainbows paper from the celebration catalog. So I'll give you a sneak peek of those. <laughs> Brian does not want to be on camera, but one of these days I will have a Brian cam and he'll wave and say hi, but I'm not going to spring that on him. I need his help tonight, so I don't want to do that to him. You guys are awesome. All right, so, oh, I love you guys are connecting in the comments. Many of you from Ohio, which is where I was born and raised, so hey, hey, Ohio represent. All right, so um, here is my website, thepaperpixie.com, where I post projects to inspire you. Stop by and visit me there. Um, you can subscribe to receive blog updates each time I publish a new post, so you can check that out. You'll find that at the bottom of any page at my blog. Uh, let's see, orders of $50 or more. These are the three free gift choices. You wanna make sure that you use the host code unless your order is gonna be $150 or more. Don't use the host code or remove the host code because you're gonna earn stamp rewards on orders of 150 or more. The easiest way to shop with the code is my shopping link, thepaperpixie.com slash shop. And then you'll get to choose a free gift from me. You get to triple dip this month and next month. Not only will you get a free gift from me for a $50 order, you also get to pick out a free celebration item because we're in the midst of our winter celebration through February 28th. You get, there's free choices for $50 increments, and free choices for $100 increments, and you can mix and match if you put in a big order. There's also a free host set, Calming Camellia, that's free with a $300, if you, $300 order if you shop big, as well as um, the starter kit special, which is always amazing during celebration. This time around, it's $99. You get to choose up to $125 in products, so custom starter kit, pick what you want, up to $125. And then on top of that, you get to pick two any two free stamp sets, or any two stamp sets for free, if I'm saying that the right way. <laughs> it's about, if you maximize the dollars there, I'm up to $191 in product for only 99. And I said you could tri triple dip. So we've got my free gift for orders of $50 or more. That's my own personal free gift to my customers. The celebration freebies, as well as my Pixie Perks. That's my customer loyalty program. You get a Pixie Perks stamp on your digital loyalty card for orders of $50 or more, each order increment of 50. So lots of ways to, to work towards free stuff. So. Um, if you don't already have a demonstrator and you'd like complimentary copies of our current catalogs, you can submit a catalog request with me at thepaperpixie.com slash happy mail, because it sure is happy mail, those catalogs. And my daughter Lily is a, well, she's a daisy. No, am I saying that right? Yes. No, she's a brownie. She was a daisy last year. She's a brownie this year. Do you guys ever feel like you don't know what happened to the last two years? Anyways, Lily is selling Girl Scout cookies. I just got her set up today. Thepaperpixie.com slash cookies will take you to her uh, Girl Scout cookie site if you don't already have a local Girl Scout in your neighborhood. Lily would love to be your Girl Scout. And um, 
Let's see. You can also donate cookies to the military. I think it's called Smiles for Military. You don't pay for shipping on those. So a couple of options there. There's brand new cookies called the Adventure Fulls, which are going on my first order of cookies. They're like a brownie with a caramel cream, caramel drizzle, and sea salt, I think. Oh my gosh, I can't wait to try it. So anyways, <laughs> that's the scoop there. I'm going to flip my camera really quick and put on my picture in picture. Let me show you show and tell and we'll jump into tonight's projects. I'll put them on fancy plates, but <laughs> Lily and I, so we had a long weekend with Martin Luther King Jr. Day on Monday. We made soap and we used um, essential oils because I couldn't stand the fragrance that came in the box. So we did lavender, orange, Mm, grapefruit and peppermint and then Nolan got to go excavating for fossils and so that is what um, he did here I don't know what I think these are supposed to be fossils the stones even though there's no imprints of things but there's pretty sure that's a dinosaur claw and a dinosaur tooth and of course a little plastic dinosaur that we tried to have standing up so Facebook seems to be freezing Facebook is freezing so that is likely something that might be on your end um, the stream should be okay, but um, if you're having troubles, try going out and coming back in. Um, all right, so tonight's projects. We've got an easy 3D project here and a super fun card. Now this card is perfect for all of your designer series paper scraps. And yes, I'm talking to you because <laughs> I know you have a lot of designer series paper or patterned paper in your crafty stash so this is a great card to use up those scraps and how fun to showcase multiple sides of the designer series paper it's really easy to make if you kind of take your time it's sort of like a patchwork card i was inspired by a pin that i saw i think it was a simon says um, stamp set but they had for inspiration a project made with the stamp set but it had this really cool patchwork pattern and I just thought that this paper from the celebration catalog you can get for free the sunshine and rainbows um, I know you're gonna ask this swatch book is from my upline Brian King he offers them at the start of every catalog but um, this just the colors super fun cheerful bright love these and you get lots of different patterns so let me try to go through those a little bit faster for you because you can see some of them on the card this one's my favorite actually the stripes those bright stripes i gravitate towards the brights color family anyways this pattern you can use the cloud punch and punch out all those clouds i love when stampin up does that coordination and super fun so that is the sunshine and Ra rainbows designer series paper which we're using tonight as well as we're gonna be using the Rainbow of Happiness bundle. And I just love the way that you can build rainbows. Now, if you participated in my product shares, you got a cute little three by three mini card that I'd created a rainbow with um, sunshine peeking from behind the clouds. And these are the brilliant rainbow dies that coordinate with it. And we are also gonna be using the Tasteful Labels dies. This was a happy accident here, but I don't know if you can see, let's see if you can see the texture there. That is from the Tasteful Labels. That's the smallest circle here, but it gives you that really cute sunburst look there. It embosses and cuts. I thought that was just a perfect way to showcase a sunshine. So why don't we start with, hmm, let's start with the card. Let's build that together and then we'll do the easy. This, um, I'm not sure what to call this, but this is perfect for holding. And here I've got, a Starburst Swirler, which I found at Walmart. They've got some great treats, but I'm sure you can find these on Amazon. Just something fun to put in here. It, the colors kind of matched the Sunshine and Rainbows paper, but you can fit a bone folder in here. That fits really well. This is actually how I give my team gifts. So that'll hold a bone folder. It will also hold an emery board or nail file as well. So believe it or not, I just used staples on this. I've got a little mini stapler. It's the Stampin' Up! one that's retired, but I know you can get mini staplers anywhere. Um, but I just use a stapler and that makes that really, really easy. This is a six by six inch piece. We'll talk about that when we get to it, but great project for your product share papers, okay? All right, so we're gonna start with a piece of basic white. This is gonna be sort of our um, canvas for putting our uh, triangle pieces on and this measures three and three quarters by five okay so I have got four pieces of the sunshine and rainbows 
um, designer series paper and these four pieces measure one and five eighths by two and a quarter, okay? And if you have any of them that are a directional pattern, which you'll see the hearts on this pattern are directional and the rainbows, you want it to be in portrait for this card, unless you were to do a landscape card, then you would wanna do it the other way. But what I'm gonna do, I had cut all four of them at the same time. I'm not gonna be so ambitious this time because um, I was not straight with my cut lines, but we are basically gonna cut on the diagonal all four of these pieces from the lower left corner to the upper right corner. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Now, I'm gonna show you how to do this on the paper trimmer. You can use either a larger pair of scissors or you can do this on the paper trimmer. And if you're brave, go ahead and do it to multiple pieces at once. All right, so we're doing lower right corner, sorry, lower left corner to upper right corner. And I'm just lining up those corners right here in the groove and cut. So you're basically going to do that to all four pieces. Again, paying attention, just seeing if there's anything that is directional. So I just checked the back side of that and that is hearts. So we want to make sure we cut this in the same way. Brian is um, starring your comments, your questions for you, um, and that I'll, I'll answer questions at the end unless it's something specific to what I'm working on. All right, so we've done those. And now the fun part is to sort of just dry fit and lay these pieces out. So I'm gonna show you, I'll probably have to look back at my sample as well, but I start with the pieces that are directional. So I'm gonna put this one like so, okay? Then, let's see, let's do, we're gonna flip this guy because we wanna make sure that we get all different patterns here. The triangle stitched dies. I, good question, Michelle. I would have to check that because I'm not sure the size of them. Absolutely, you could, but you might need to change the um, the size of your base here. That's the only thing that you might need to change. Okay. But great suggestion. All right, I'm flipping these around here. Just have fun moving stuff around. All right, so that one has to go that way because of the hearts. This is really fun to put together. Stripes. Let's see. Squiggly doos. <laughs> and then, what did, oh yeah, there we go. So it's like that. Now here's what we're gonna do is just start to um, get them as close to their position as you want before you start gluing down. This is where liquid glue is gonna really help. So I'm just gonna start in this corner and sort of have eighth of an inch of the white peeking through. Got something for me? No, okay. All right, so we're gonna start with this one here. And just take your liquid glue and just start to work it around. So we'll start with that piece and then we'll do the piece right underneath it to make sure that those are lined up top to bottom. So see how I'm lining up that left edge as well as just the spacing. And then we'll just work our way around. So the weirdest thing with our weather here, I'm sure you guys saw in the news that the southeast got snow, which is, I don't know, it happens every couple of years for us. And um, I was born and raised in the Cleveland, Ohio area, so snow is not new to me, but it's still exciting when Atlanta gets snow. So the kids were just having a field day for about an hour in the front yard. They did a snowman. So that was uh, Sunday? Is that when we got the snow? I don't even remember. My days are running together. I think it was Sunday. Um, it was Sunday. And then today, it went up to 60 degrees. <laughs> was it 60 or 50? 60, which is just so weird. So the snowman's no longer around in the front yard. 
<laughs> Nolan asked if we had um, carrot for his nose, and we didn't have any carrots. He goes, how about a pickle? <laughs> like, I like how you think, buddy. But I think we didn't give him a pickle, did we? <laughs> the snowman didn't live long enough for a pickle in his nose. Um... Now, don't worry about what the middle looks like. Like, if the middle doesn't look like it's lining up all that well, you're going to cover that with our sentiment anyways. So I'm just taking my time here and just building out this little patchwork. We got about, um, I saw your question, Carrie Ann. What did we get? Uh, two inches, maybe? Not even. Stuck? Yeah, it was weird because the ground is was still so warm because it kind of came out of nowhere. So... We got lots of flurries, which was fun to watch, but it didn't really stick that much. It definitely didn't stick on the roads or um, driveways or sidewalks. So. All right, we got our last two pieces here. Sometimes triangles are hard to hold, so feel free to use craft tweezers if that helps you. And again, the liquid glue is key because you can kind of just slide things into place before that glue adheres. It's actually very rela relaxing. This is kind of like paper piercing or paper piecing. Um, I always find this and coloring to be very relaxing. We'll do a little bit of coloring tonight too. All right, that's looking pretty good there. All right, so now we're gonna take this and we're gonna adhere it to a base, and this is thick basic white. I always like to use the thick basic white for my card bases. I love that we added this to our product line because it was always hard to create a card base out of our regular basic white, or it was whisper white at the time. But this measures four and a quarter by 11, and I've just scored it in the middle at five and a half inches. And sometimes I find that um, the paper's not always cut perfectly straight, either by me or by stamping up sometimes. So I just take my time when I line up those edges before I burnish, okay? So that's our card base. And then I'm gonna grab dimensionals. Now, I'm gonna be a little heavy with the dimensionals here because I anticipate sending this in the mail. That's where we up to six. Let's do eight. <laughs> all right, taking off all the backings here. Thank you for sharing. And then we'll pop this up on the front. Make sure you're, you're paying attention to the patterns that are directional. The size of the squares, Laura, are one and five eighths by two and a quarter. And you're gonna do four of those and then you cut them on the diagonal. So we're showcasing both sides of the paper, but we cut all of those triangles from the lower left to the upper right. And then we flip-flopped and just made sure that the directional patterns were going in the right, right direction. It's actually just these three, the sunbursts, the hearts, and the rainbows, okay? Now, let me grab a scrap piece of basic white here. And we're gonna grab the sentiment from Rainbow of Happiness a little something to brighten your day. I'm gonna stamp that in Misty Moonlight and we're gonna punch this out with the Cloud Punch. I love the Cloud Punch with this bundle. Let's do, I need to re-ink my Misty Moonlight. I feel like I say that every time <laughs> I stamp. Let's put it a little bit here so I got room for my cloud. We got this adorable cloud punch, trying to catch the light there so you can see the shape of it. I'll show you on the back as well. And it fits really well on the left side of that cloud. You kind of have the curve of the word a little. I just think that fits perfectly in there. So pop that out. Now the cloud punch you may have missed. It is not a, it does not come in a bundle. It's a standalone punch in the mini catalog. Misty Moonlight is a blue, Nancy. It might be coming up across a little bit purple on the screen. Sometimes it's hard to get those colors rendered correctly. And then I've got this little trio of hearts that we're gonna stamp in Magenta Madness. And I'm gonna do that just a little bit off to the side here. 
little pop of color there. I am making a mess. All right, and then I know that these were low inventory. I've been using so many of these because I love them, but these are the iridescent rhinestone basic jewels. Which side did I, I use the big one, I guess. But I'm not, I didn't check the inventory status report before this. So if not, um, the regular basic rhinestone jewels would be beautiful as well. All right, let's go ahead and build our little, I guess, sunrise, sunset, little happy sunshine and happy clouds. I sound like Bob Ross. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to take the little sun. All right, so then let's just put this, oh, I don't know, about there. <laughs> the sun is very forgiving. And some dimensionals. Can never have too many. You get 300 of the regular size dimensionals in a pack, so I'm pretty liberal with them. And then we're just going to kind of center that in the center. And there is our little happy... What would you call this patchwork card? I love, love the colors of that. So that's the Misty Moonlight. Hopefully that's coming across blue on the screen. It looks like it on my monitor, but oh, so fun. And that little pop with the iridescence, if you can get your hands on those, really pretty with the rainbows. So there is our little happy card. Let's go ahead and jump into the really quick and easy treat holder or... Um, it's sort of an origami style, but I'm obviously using adhesive and staples and things. Um, but I want to give a shout out to uh, Brenda Quintana at QB's Quest. Um, she shared this a, a few years ago, but I absolutely fell in love with it. And it's such a quick and easy project to create. Great for using up designer series paper. Um, really cute for craft fairs. You could put um, emery boards in there or nail, nail files, whatever you call them. Um, bone folders, really cute for a team gift. Obviously, these fun starburst swirlers. Let me get the box to show you. I'd never seen these before. Um, I love starburst, uh, but they come in three different flavors, and this is just fun, bright colors, but it fits perfectly in this little treat holder. Okay, so... We've got six by six, the uh, rainbows and, what's it called again? <laughs> Sunshine and Rainbows Designer Series Paper. This is a freebie for celebration. You can get it free with a $50 purchase. And um, it only comes in six by six, so it's perfect for this project. But we're basically gonna score it every one and a half inches. So we're gonna do one and a half, three, and four and a half. And I forgot to mention the pattern that you want on the outside is the one that you want facing up and you want the directional pattern to go from top to bottom. So right side up and then the side you want on the outside. So one and a half, three and four and a half. Okay. And then we're going to fold and burnish on all the score lines. And I love that mango melody pattern behind it. So you'll see a little peak of that in the little pot this little pocket that we're making all right so this is the front of it we're going to flip it over to the back we're going to start with this upper right corner and i'm going to fold the corner to right along that first score line and i like to fold it just before the score line i'll show you close to the camera but i came right up to the score line okay because we are going to be folding these things over so i just didn't want the edge of the paper to get in our way okay then we're gonna do, on this top left corner, we're gonna actually fold from the corner to the second score line or that middle score line. So again, kind of get my finger here and the edge, but then line that up to just before the score line. Fold and then burnish. Okay, so now it's looking like this. And then we've got one more corner, the lower left. We're gonna repeat the same thing we did in the upper right. So just to that first score line, again, coming in a little short. So you should look like this when you're all folded. Again, this is actually the outside of our little treat holder. This is what the inside's going to look like. So I kind of turn it counterclockwise. I'm gonna fold this down 
then this over, okay? So we're going to, I could do it this way as well, but the first score line from the right, we're folding in. The second score line from the left, we're gonna fold in. And then this is just gonna wrap around to the back. Now, you're gonna be folding over a lot of layers of paper, so this is gonna fight you a little bit, but just get it as close as you can and then just come in and burnish. You've got, I don't know, one, two, three, almost six layers of paper that that's kind of wrapping around here. So let me show you that one more time. We've got our corners folded like this. Then we go ahead and fold. I see that Linda pixie sticks. That would be great. Um, I didn't even see pixie sticks, but those would be adorable in this as well. So we folded this in then on this middle score line and then fold this to the back. Okay. Now there are a couple different ways that you can, that's getting in my way there. Hold on, let's get that out of the way. There's a couple different ways you can adhere this. You could do um, quite hefty with some liquid glue as well. And then you'll probably want to a small ruler. Yes, I got one right here, let's see. It sure would. Now, if you close the bottom, it's gonna stick out a little bit. Again, this is a six inch ruler, but they give you a little bit more. Um, to hang it by the hole there, but yeah, a small ruler would fit. That'd be really cute, really cute, especially like for a teacher gift or something like that, okay? So again, you could put liquid glue in here just a little bit to close off the bottom and then liquid glue on this flap to close off the flap, but I'm just gonna grab a mini stapler because we want this to be quick and easy. Now you may not like the look of staples, so by all means go ahead and use liquid. I would use liquid glue versus tear and tape because I think it'll hold up easier. But I'm just gonna punch the bottom so our treat doesn't fall through the bottom. And then I'm gonna punch the side, but I want the staple to be on the front. And then I'm just making sure that I'm centered there on the back before I punch. And I'm going as close to the edge as I can, but boom, done. <laughs> How cool is that? So again, we can fit a bone folder in there. It holds a bone folder really well. Emery boards, you can find them for great prices at like Dollar General, Dollar Tree, those places. Um, although didn't one of them, their prices just went up to like a dollar twenty-five or something. The dollar twenty-five tree, I don't know. <laughs> and then um, let me grab. We'll grab another one of these. Do one clashes a little bit. Let's see. Pencils would work as well, that's right. All kinds of good stuff. All right, so we're gonna put that in here and then let's do a little bit of embellishing. I've tried to save some time here tonight. I did, some die, I did the die cutting ahead of time. So again, this comes from the Brilliant Rainbow Dies, this really cute tag right here that's got the rainbow at the top. And I'm gonna stamp the same sentiment in Misty Moonlight. Now, because this is a photopolymer set, I can um, die cut it first and then stamp it, but if you prefer to stamp first and then die cut, go for it. So we're gonna do this kind of right in the center here. There's that, and then let's bring in those hearts again because I love that little pop of hearts. Ooh, yes, Nancy Lee, that, since you said that, your beaded pens, hold on, you guys, wait until you see these pens that my team member Nancy Lee made me. I have them right here, Nancy Lee, look at these. Okay, so she took my team logo. Let me turn it this way so you can see it. It's a pixie holding, oh, it's like a fairy, but like a pixie holding a magic wand. She beaded this, you guys. Look at that. And this one with the flowers, so, so pretty. But these would be perfect in here, Nancy Lee. Oh, yes, look at that. Love it, love it, love it. But yeah, Nancy Lee is my very talented beading artist team member. And paper crafter extraordinaire as well, even though she'll argue with me on that, but she does great work. So I'm gonna do one more embellishment and then we'll pop that up on the front oh I forgot to do the coloring as well it's the best part take your pick tool that's what I'm looking for grab that and just put it off to the side I love adding just a little piece of flair we're gonna bring in some Stampin' Blends here and 
many of you have been asking, yes, I will be updating my Stampin' Blends labels for the new skin tone Stampin' Blends. So stay tuned for that. If you have already purchased my Stampin' Blends labels, let me just show you what those look like. Those are all ups most of them upside down. But if you've already purchased them, I will be sending you a brand new file. So stay tuned for that. You'll get that included in what you paid for them. And if you haven't purchased the Stampin' Blends labels, go check out thepaperpixie.com. Right there on the homepage, you can see my digital download there. The sentiment says, a little something to brighten your day. But we're gonna turn that into a rainbow and I'm giving a shout out to my upline, Brian King. He shared the cutest project with this technique. He basically just colored the rainbow with Stampin' Blends. So that's what we're gonna do tonight. We've got Magenta Madness. I like to do the brush tip. But we're gonna go ahead and just color directly on the paper here. So quick and easy. There's that one. Then I, uh, we don't have um, Mango Melody Stampin' Blends, but the dark Daffodil Delight works perfectly, especially if you um, color over it a couple times. And just take your time making sure that you're not uh, coloring the wrong ones, kind of like trying to color inside the lines a bit but I thought that that Daffodil Delight looked beautiful. Red, orange, yellow, green. <laughs> this is Granny Apple Green. These are all the dark shades because I wanted it to really pop. But you could, you could die cut a bunch of these and then just sit on the couch and have fun coloring. But perfectly fits this little treat holder. And then I've got Dark Bermuda Bay. Let's turn it sideways, there we go. All right, there's our little happy rainbow. Let's, oh, I can't see that very well. There we go. Isn't that cute? Oh, so cute with the rainbow. All right, now, because the treat that's in here, you can see it's added a little bit of bulk to that, I'm just gonna put a trio of dimensionals just right down the center so that we can make sure that that sticks really well. Got my little pile of dimensionals. We used a lot of dimensionals tonight, didn't we? And then I'm just gonna pop that right in the center. And there we have our cute little treat holder. Again, you guys gave some great ideas for what this can hold. Pencils, emery board, um, a mini ruler, pixie sticks, what am I forgetting? This interesting starburst swirlers, bone folders, so lots of cute things. So I cannot wait to see what you create with this. Don't forget you can share it on social media with the hashtag paper pixie and I will check it out. So those are tonight's projects. Why don't we do a little bit of Q and A really quickly and then we'll jump right into prize patrol and then I will let y'all go for tonight. So I see 10 questions. Do I accept Venmo or PayPal for Girl Scout cookie orders? We are actually gonna be doing everything on the digital cookie site because it makes it so much easier for our um, cookie mom and our troop. So we will not be accepting Venmo or PayPal. I think it is just credit card for that. The clear plastic sleeves for my die sets, I got those from Amazon. So if you visit my favorites page, oops, let me go to that really quickly. You go to my favorites page and you can't see that because I, <laughs> um, the paperpixie.com slash favorites, they are in my storage favorites, um, C-line shop ticket holders. That's what I purchased. I love them. I've tried a whole bunch of different things, but those are my favorites. And actually, let me flip the camera so you're not, there we go. All right, let me come back to trying to navigate this question Q and A thing is different for me. Okay. So that was that and that. So I did a Valentine's box Barbara on last week's live stream and the video tutorial just went up today and is listed on my blog as well at thepaperpixie.com. I did a Valentine's box. I do have one other treat holder that I shared at the end of 2021 that will be going to my blog as well, but I already have a video tutorial for that. 
how do I store my paper pumpkin stamp sets? I actually don't store them, Kelly. So um, paper pumpkin sets, and I can't remember if I if you had emailed me this and I emailed you back or somebody else asked me the same question. My daughter puts together the paper pumpkin kits and she uses everything in the kit. Um, she doesn't let anything go to waste. <clears throat> so the stamp sets actually usually end up in my mystery boxes or mystery bags. I usually pull together all the retired designer series paper and some other embellishments and things and put together mystery boxes. And so that's usually what um, comes in the mystery boxes. Hopefully that answers that question. I have not played with the butterflies and flowers layering masks yet, but I will because that is one of the choices for this month's free gift for orders of $50 or more with me. So I will be playing with that for sure. All right, um, what is an Airtable? So Steph, Airtable is a spreadsheet slash database hybrid. It is an online app that I use to track my stamp set and die and punch inventory. So it's really like um, a spreadsheet on steroids because <laughs> there's so many other things you can do. It gives you options to create categories and things. So I do have a video tutorial for that as well as I share a copy of my Airtable base to kind of get you started if you're looking for um, a way to store or to keep track of your crafty inventory. When will the new colors of ink be coming out? Cheryl, that will be coming out in the new annual catalog starting in early May. I think it's May 3rd is when the annual catalog is set to launch and we'll have five new in colors. We'll have five in colors we'll be saying goodbye to in April. Um, I didn't share art, Norlene. The show and tell this week was the soap that Lily and I made and Nolan's um, excavation of dinosaur fossils. So that's what they chose to share with y'all today. Um, all right, and then we got three questions left. Oh, it's, it is easy to search for sentiments, Patty. So there's two ways you can do that. Um, there's a little magnifying glass in the upper right corner of your air table that you could search that way. Obviously that will hit on um, the name of the stamp set and everything else. Or you can go to the sentiments column right click on the top of that column and then you can filter by that field and that allows you to run a search that way as well okay i think linda uh, that's the labels oh it's eight dollars us um for the stamp and blends labels those are available worldwide but it's eight dollars us and you get all Right now, I haven't updated the um, download yet, but it's all Stampin' Blends that we've had, both current and retired, and I will soon be updating it with the five new, well, it's technically 10 new uh, Stampin' Blends. But if you already ordered it. But if you already ordered it, I will be sending you an updated file with the new, that will include the new Stampin' Blends. I just haven't had time to focus on that, but I, it is coming because I want the labels as well because I just got my Stampin' Blends this week. What are the little numbers by our comments? Ooh, Joe, I'm thinking on Facebook what that might say. The little numbers by your comments. I don't know. That's a question I don't know the answer to. Is, I, that might be a Facebook thing, but let me know if you've got more information you can give me about that or if anybody knows what she's talking about. I'd love to know. Mystery boxes I don't know yet, Kat, Katie. Um, Sometime this year. I didn't do mystery boxes last year, so I've got quite a stash of things coming up this year. It might be more like um, mystery bags. It all depends how much I have to give. <laughs> but you guys eat that stuff up, so. All right, is Airtable a free app? It sure is, Kelly. Um, there are, um, fr there's just a few limitations with free. Limitations would be like the number of records that you can have. I think the space that you have, like if you're adding photos, but I will say that even the next tier up, I think I'm on the professional plan and I want to say I paid like $96 for the whole year. Um, and that might sound like a lot, but it's actually a really good price for what it can do. Um, if you're just going to be using it for your craft inventory, well, it depends on the size of your inventory, but I would think um, the free would be just fine. There's a couple things that you wouldn't get with that, like the color categories and things like that but make sure you check out their pricing plan and it'll tell you what's included in the free versus the paid plans okay all right i think 
Oh, okay. So Elaine is saying this might, you might be right. So Joe, it might be the timestamp of when folks left their comments on Facebook. All right. Okay, so hashtag time, let's do that. Or I should say prize patrol time. <laughs> okay, uh, let me go to this. So for prize patrol, I am giving away two of the Better Places host stamp set. I love this. It's also got a great Happy Father's Day sentiment as well. I kind of snuck that one in here, but you make the world a better place. Celebrate, celebrate the wonder of this day and then these great scene sets as well. So I've got two of those. That's a host set. Can only be purchased with Stampin' Rewards. And to participate in Prize Patrol, you want to leave in the comments, hashtag Prize Patrol. If you haven't already, you've probably seen a lot of that in the comments. I only ship within the US, so US residents only. But make sure you include the hashtag, no spaces, and spell it correctly for your chance to be entered to win. And I will choose two winners here momentarily. I'll give you a little bit of time for that. Um, but again, really quickly, let, let me recap. Orders of $50 or more, these are the three free gifts to choose from. And if you need catalogs, thepaperpixie.com slash happy mail. And if you're looking for Girl Scout cookies, thepaperpixie.com slash cookies will take you to my daughter Lily's Girl Scout cookie site. So, all right, let's go ahead and I'm gonna share that. Let's draw our first winner. Get my Sharpie ready. Katherine Yurick, yay! Congratulations, Catherine. I always love to see a customer name pop up there. Thank you. All right, let's go ahead and draw for winner number two. And then I'll pop up on the screen how you can claim your prize patrol. Judy Jablanca, congratulations. All right, ladies, congratulations. Let me go ahead and stop sharing there. Let's come back. Here is where you will claim your prize patrol, the paperpixie.com slash prize patrol. Catherine and Judy, congratulations. Thanks for tuning in live tonight. I will be live next Wednesday for episode 225. <laughs> if I'm, <clears throat> excuse me, doing the math right. And I will be live again at 8 p.m. Eastern time. Multi streaming to, excuse me, <clears throat> multi streaming to both YouTube and Facebook. And I am looking forward to seeing you next week. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me at any time. Um, the projects, let's see. Tomorrow, my pocket fold is actually going to uh, post to the blog. <laughs> It took me a while. I forgot the kids had Monday off this week, so my schedule is all out of whack. But that will be the pocket fold tutorial tomorrow from last week's live stream. The box posted today. The pocket fold will post tomorrow. And likely, I haven't decided yet, one of these two projects will be on Friday and the other one will be on Monday. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for joining me live. Thanks to those of you watching on the replay. I hope you have a wonderful and blessed week, and I will see you next Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time for episode 225. Take good care.